One of the things people with auditory processing difficulties struggle with a lot is listening in noisy environments. Now, all people have more trouble listening in a noisy environment than they would in a quiet environment, but some people have exceptional difficulty with this, to the point where they'll avoid doing certain things. They might avoid going out with friends, they might avoid, avoid having conversations at a party with someone else, or they just might avoid social situations altogether, which can really affect their life. Audiologists often refer to listening in background noise as auditory figure ground discrimination. The figure refers to the sound you want to focus on and the ground refers to the background noise you're trying to ignore. So auditory figure ground discrimination is just a fancy way of describing someone's ability to pick out the sounds they want to hear in amongst a noisy background. Trouble with listening in background noise can be caused by a few factors. The first one is sound discrimination. If your brain just isn't good at telling the differences between sounds, then it's going to be really hard for you to hear clearly when there's extra background noise on top. Research shows that we have specific neurons or brain cells that process the differences between sounds. If you're interested in that, you might want to check out this study by Edward Chan and his colleagues. Now, some people have more difficulty than others in this area. The brain knows the difference between a b, a p, and a d, but the differences aren't really clear. So some people have a lot of trouble hearing the differences between these sounds when the environment is noisy and their brain ends up mixing up the sounds and the result is that they mishear sounds and words. Fast forward trains sound discrimination through lots and lots of targeted practice at hearing the differences between sounds so that we can really retrain the brain to know exactly what each sound sounds like so that when it hears it, even in a noisy situation, it can immediately process that sound. For example, in this game, students need to click on the fish and match up the ones that sounded the same. Big, 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 kit, kit, pit, pit, pit. At first, the sounds are stretched out, so they're easier to hear the difference between. I know it sounds a little bit weird. <laughs> and then later on, the sounds are made faster and more difficult, and it works through all the sounds that students need to commonly discriminate between. In this game, students listen to a sound and then pick which acorn made the same sound. Ah, uh, bah. Uh, bah, uh, bah. There are lots more exercises that work on this skill, but I think you get the idea. Fast Forward has lots of sound-based exercises that help students to retrain their brains to be really good at listening to the differences between sounds. And if you can hear the differences between sounds well in quiet, then it's going to be a lot easier in a noisy situation. The second thing that can make it hard to hear in background noise is temporal processing speed. That is how fast your brain can process sound. The trouble is sounds are fast. And if your brain isn't quite fast enough to keep up with the rapid changes in sounds, then you can mishear sounds all the time. And you can imagine how frustrating and tiring that would be, particularly for a student in the classroom, when they're constantly having to fill in these gaps <laughs> about what they heard and constantly having to guess what they've heard. A noisy environment makes that even harder. So a child who might be able to sort of cope and compensate by guessing what they heard in a quiet environment, when they're put in a noisy environment, it adds that extra layer of difficulty and then they can really start to show difficulties there. So to demonstrate how a change in timing can affect a word, let's listen to this word. Say. Okay, you heard say, right? What about if we add 100 milliseconds of silence straight after the S? Stay. What did you hear now? Maybe stay or spay? If a student can't process fast enough to hear the differences between these sounds, then listening in the classroom is going to be very difficult for them and listening in noise is going to be very difficult as well. Fast Forward trains temporal processing speed by starting with slower sounds and then as the student is ready, moving up to faster ones. In this exercise, students hear two sounds and they need to click the arrows that matched what they heard.
As they progress and get faster, the sounds also get faster. The third thing that makes listening in noise difficult is how good you are at paying attention to sound. If you have trouble paying attention to somebody who is speaking in a quiet room, imagine how much trouble you're going to have when the room is noisy and there are extra distractions around you. Fast Forward trains auditory attention through a number of exercises. One example is this exercise. Students listen to a sound which plays over and over until it changes. When it changes, we need to click the animal. The sounds get more and more difficult as the student gets better at the exercise. In summary, trouble listening in noise is a very real problem that affects a lot of people and it can have serious effects on their ability to carry on a conversation, socialise and be in a learning situation. In some situations, we can remove the background noise, but in many situations, that just isn't possible. But the good news is that we can retrain the brain to be better at listening and better at listening in background noise. If you'd like to know more information about the programs you saw today, uh, watch these demo videos which are about to appear on the screen and feel free to contact us for a chat to see if Fast Forward training might be right for you.